What is Gucci, everybody? Hello from Texas. My name is AJ, and in this video, we're going to be covering Swift generics. Now, if you're new to programming, generics can be pretty difficult. I remember when I was learning programming, generics was probably the hardest thing for me to understand. You may get it really easily, but it's it's when basically program programming becomes much more abstract than when what you're used to in the beginning of learning programming. I also want to note that I'm going to post helpful links below so you can just click them right now if you want to get an intro to generics before continuing on with the video. So right now I have a simple uh, Swift file that defines a class called stack. And if you don't know what a stack data structure, essentially what it is, it's just a data structure where you can push, where you can only add elements to the end and you can only remove elements from the end. So to get the first element, you'd have to remove everything on top of it or everything at the end, okay? And so when I make my stack one over here, I'm gonna declare it like I always do and I'm gonna do, make a new class stack and I can do stack dot push and I can push an integer like 23 and I can, sorry, I wanna do stack one dot push 23. I want this to be a stack one as well, not the stack class because these are instance functions, meaning they can only be used when the class is created like on line 25 right here. Okay, so this is all fine and dandy. This stack can, can add integers to an array internally, the items array, and then if I want to pop off an element, I can simply do that by doing stack one dot pop not push, and running it with command R, command run. And when I do that, I get 23 because I pushed on 23. I'll make this more seriously. So when I pop something off, I should get 43 because 43 was the last element pushed on, okay? So there we go, that's a simple stack. Now, here is where generics comes in. I haven't talked about generics yet in this video. It, this stack is very good. It works exactly how we want it to. It adds integers and it puts and it's able to add them to the end and pop them off at the end pretty easily. Okay? But what if we needed a stack that used that added strings not integers? Well, I would need to copy this kind of and then change integer right here to string you know, I need to change all the types. I can't add strings to this array here. So I would need to make like a string stack class, as you can see here. And then I would need to, yeah, basically do that. And then if I made another type, say like an employee class, and I wanted to add, you know, my array of employees, I would need to do that as well. Okay? So that can be pretty burdensome to do that. I could add, make 50 stacks possibly. So that's not really abstract. And in programming, it's very good to be as abstract as possible so that you can use, reuse your classes later, reuse. That's really what I kind of think about programming the most is that it's really hard to get, to get a grasp starting out on programming because a lot of the concepts are used for the mindset that when you make a million line program, when you make a program with thousands of people working on it at the same time, you want everything to be as abstract as possible so other people can use your code easily. And when you're beginning your code, you want to make, you kind of want to take this narrow road and make your code as like finite as possible because you're just understanding everything and you just think the program works for you. So generics help to <laughs> make your program more abstract. And the way you can do this is by using arrow brackets. And so what generics is gonna solve is it's gonna solve our problem. It's gonna solve our problem that this stack is only allowed to use ints. Well now we're gonna use we're gonna make a class that can you that can take any type so we can add anything to this array and it's gonna be using by it's gonna be using generics. So we can do this by simply doing stack and then an arrow arrow bracket and then a closing arrow bracket and then giving it a name. So by doing this, I put in element. And so what I'm saying here is, we are gonna have a generic element, a, gen a generic type that's name is element. So I'm making a generic type. 
And what that means, it's really confusing, I think, in the beginning. A generic type can be anything. And if you don't understand that, just watch the example I show at the end. So basically, I'm defining a type that doesn't exist. I'm defining my own type, and I'm calling it element. Just like when you make a class, you kind of define your own type that you can declare later in code. So I'm defining a type called element. And so now I'm going to change all of the classes, all of the instances where int was, I'm going to change them to element because now element is the type. The array is of type element, push takes an element, and pop takes returns an element, okay? So now here on now here on line 26, when I declare my stack class, I am going to say I now need to say what type this stack takes, and I'm going to say it takes a string. So then I define what my stack is taking inside these arrow brackets. So whatever I do, so here I'm defining a type we all know and love. I'm defining a type string. So when this class gets created, string gets mapped to element. So element is now, for stack one, is mapped to, to a string. So then items becomes a string array, push takes a string, and pop returns a string. And so now my stack one, it's giving me errors right here because it's saying it's expecting, well, actually, let's look up the error. Well, that's because I didn't close this. It's expecting strings. And it says cannot convert value of type int to expected type string. So it's expecting a string, which is good. It's what we want. So we're going to do empty quotes in ABC. And now when I run this program, I should get ABC as my return value. So now I want... This may be hard to sit around and I highly suggest reading more on it to see more examples. But now, as you can see here, I can make this stack, I can make another stack, I can make stack two, and I can make it take integers now. So I can make a stack or a data structure that just takes integers. So that's pretty cool. So I could also make it take like a class, if I made a class called employee or class car, I could make it take classes of cars, which is pretty cool. So now you kind of see the genius of this. Instead of making 40 different stack classes for all the different types using generics, I just defined one class and that covers all my types because the whatever type I give it at runtime, lines 26 and 27, will be mapped to the class when the class runs. So then I can have different stacks using different types and, you, and basically store what I want to store in this case. So that's the power of generics, and that's the simple power is to understand that the syntax can look weird because you're using arrow brackets to define it. And I just want to note, element here, it could be anything. It could be T. You just have to be consistent. It's just like naming a variable. The variable name could be anything, but you need to be consistent if you're going to reuse it later in the program. So if I change this all to just capital T, it works as well. Just to note, capital T, if you look at the examples, is the most common. They do T for type. So when you see generics, even in Java or other languages, T is probably the most common generic, okay? You can also, if you really want to, you can do two generics. I could, I could define two types. So then when you declared, then when you declared your class, you would also need to say int string, int double, and then now I have two types, E and T. Then I would have, I would also have to use, um, then maybe I could have another, I could have a dictionary um, I could have a dictionary that does that's ET or something like that. Now we have something very interesting here that I'm going to cover because I'm going to cover everything about generics right here. So actually, I tried to make a dictionary that has keys of type E and values of type T, which is mapped at runtime, like I said. But now I get an error that says, just so I can show you, type E does not conform to protocol hashable. So that means that for dictionaries to work, you need to define to a protocol hashable. And so to, to fix this problem, what we can do is, is we can also make generics, we can make them inherit, inherit, inherit from protocols. So now I'm saying stack. It has two generic types. It is type T, which can be anything, and it's type E. And E must be hashable. So most types are hashable. So hashable is a protocol that the dictionary uses to arrange itself. So it's used to evaluate the keys. 
So for instance, if I look at the string class by command clicking on it, I can probably see what it inherits from, if it's somewhere here. Maybe this isn't a good thing to look at here. I've got a struct double, but a string does conform to the hashable class and it doesn't do that when I do there. So therefore now I can make dictionaries out of that, which is pretty cool. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and ask any questions, this is a very difficult topic. Have a great day. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click right here to see more videos about basic high school, college, computer science concepts. Click down here if you want to see my latest videos on app development, iOS, Mac, and Swift. Have a great day!